Hello there, I'm Vinny and I'm back on YouTube. I'm back on YouTube for a very good reason because I just received from the good folks at Music Theme and they sent me this little product called the Mighty Pluck MP2 by NewX. Now this is potentially a game changer for our late night practices or our hotel room practices. So what it is, let's dive straight into it. And right off the box, we have the product, the NewX MP2. I think I like how this product sits in my hand already. It is not heavy and it feels very firm. This um, plug that I just moved up feels very firm. So it doesn't feel flimsy or anything like that. Has a few switches here and there. Oh, and there's a rubber pad at the back. I like things that has a little rubber pad because when you put them on your table, it doesn't slide around. So that is good. What else do we have in the box? Oh, we have the USB cable. Let me see. Right, so this is the micro USB, not the USB-C. So you got to take note. And from my experience with many products, micro USB comes in two types. One that allows only charging and the other allows you to transmit data. Okay, what else is in the box? Some sponge to hold the thing. And finally, the most important thing. Yes, you guessed it, the instruction manual. Let me tell you one thing about the instruction manual. We all skip reading the instruction manual. I'm sure you're guilty of that. So, yep. So the instruction manual is definitely going to contain a lot of things that we need to learn in order to use the product without asking, why is my product not working? So, but don't worry, I have read the instruction manual. So we're going to dive straight into reviewing this MP2. So in order for the MP2 to work, it is actually paired up with my iPad. It's an app on the iPad. So this thing sends a Bluetooth MIDI signal into the iPad or vice versa. Uh, so I can set every single thing on my iPad into this thing. But without, if I'm on, the, on a holiday tour or an overseas trip, right, without the iPad, I can, still, I can still use this device. Because once you have set your four different settings for your clean, overdrive, distortion, and your acoustic guitar simulator, it will be stored in this thing. So I don't actually need to flip this thing up all the time. I only need this if I want to set some settings and I want to use some of the functions. I will go through the other functions later on, but let's learn how to use the MP2 first. Now the first thing to note is that the MP2 is plugged into your 35mm um, audio cable, stereo audio cable, the typical headphone cable, because this is designed for you to plug straight into your earphone when you practice at home or in the hotel, right? So uh, here I have a 35mm audio cable. All I need to do is to plug it in and that's it. But let's say you have a big quarter inch cable. All you need to do is to get a converter that can convert the quarter inch into a small 35mm plug. Jack. Plug or jack, I can't remember, right? So how do we do this? First, we press and hold the power button and it comes up green. So there are four colors to this button. Green, orange, red, not very obvious on my screen, and white. So the green is your first channel, which is the clean sound for electric guitar. Orange for overdrive, red for distortion, and the white is for the acoustic guitar simulator. So next up, I'm gonna pair this straight to my iPad. What I'm gonna do is to go to settings, and if it is not already found, all you need to do is click on the device, like the, like so. And now it's connected. And you will notice it says uh, New X Mighty Plug MIDI. So it actually is not sending any audio signal, unlike what you think Bluetooth will be working as most of the time, right? So right now it is only transmitting MIDI signals through uh, back and through this device and your iPad. So here on, I can now go on and set all four settings that I want to set. So I'm gonna plug this straight into my guitar and we're gonna have a listen to the different sounds that I've set for you. Okay, cool, so now we're plugged into the device. Right off the bat, we have the clean sound of the device. They offer quite a few amplifier like the Jazz 120, 
uh, Tweet Deluxe, uh, Twin Reverb. So you can set around all these various um, amplifier as well as IR. So they do show you a few different kind of speaker cabinet that you can choose from. So right now I'm at a Jazz 120 cabinet, which is by default the one. And I also have like at the bottom most I have V412, that's definitely vintage 30 um, 4x12. I forgot to mention that I've actually sat with some modulations and I've sat with some delays and reverb already into the, the, my system. So maybe I should just turn them off and show them how it sounds. So right now, and as well as I included noise gate and this noise gate uh, doubles up as a noise gate and as well as a compressor. So in this case, I'm setting it more like a compressor. It's not exactly a compressor, but it works pretty much like one from, from how I heard it. So anyway, yes. So now it's just the amplifier and the IR. So this is a uh, your Roland Jazz Chorus. With the uh, V412 cabinet. Let's go back to the Jazz Chorus cabinet. So maybe let me do some plucking and see how it sounds like to your ears. I mean, it sounds very decent for something that is this small, all right? Right, so now I'm going to put back all the various effects that I have set previously. I have set a noise gate, like I mentioned, works more like a compressor here. You can also choose to add more effects, so your uni vibe tremolo, all that stuff. Distortion one, I guess, is DS one, and tube, TS drive tube screamer, etc. So maybe we should try it with a bit of TS drive. So anyway, that's uh, modulations. Yes, I have my phases, chorus, stereo chorus, and all the cool stuff. I'm not gonna use that now. The light just showing you. I have ping pong delay, digital delay, um, tape and analog. And I also have a lot of spring reverb, uh, reverb options. I have room, hall, plate, spring, shimmer. Shimmer is something that is of trend recently because I don't know where it started, but it's nice. Let's have a listen. Maybe putting more in the mix. So it leaves this nice bright tail at the end of your reverb. So I turn everything on that I want to be saved into the MP2, right? So everything's set. Let me check again. Right, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to save it, and I'm going to hit the save button. What it's doing is it's communicating with the device, and you'll save this thing into your device. Right, so now I can move on to the next channel, uh, the overdrive. And that is all coming through this Plexi amp with my TS drive and my... This is Marshall 1960 cabinet, alright? With a little bit of digital delay, a digital, sorry, a reverb hall. And I did add a noise gate there to suppress the noise coming through the signal. So that is the uh, overdrive channel. Let's take a look at the distortion channel. So in the distortion channel, I've set it to the diesel Van Halen. 
I guess. And there are a few other firemen, I guess that's Friedman. And the recto, I guess that's Mesas. Okay. And my cat is now still at the Marshalls 1960. You can uh, set to various caps and give it a shot. So this is, uh, and also, yes, noise gear is on, reverb is on. Let's hear it sounds. Yeah, so that is the distortion channel on uh, the new X MP2. So finally, we reached the acoustic dissimilator channel, and in this case, they offer a lot of various models after famous guitars, famous acoustic guitars. And I'm going to choose the Martin D45, and my amplifier is this Optima. Mm, and let's hear how it sounds. And bear in mind that this is played on a bridge pickup of my Sir. <laughs> There's no piezo, nothing like that to simulate the sound of the acoustic guitar. I mean, it's not the best acoustic guitar sound that you can get, but I think it's pretty good. So on top of just offering sounds for your electric guitar, this thing actually works on your bass as well. And then there's the pop, rock and funk settings that you can set. So the next thing I want to talk about is the metronome system. Unlike a regular metronome that plays the standard sound over and over, it allows you to have a little bit more fun with a drum machine. For metal, blues, swing, rock, ballad rock, funk. R&B, Latin, dance, that's the 808 sound, right? And of course, you can do your tap tempo or you can set the tempo by dragging this bar left and right and the volume up and down. And finally, moving on to the third tab of the Mighty Plugs app, we have Jam Tracks. And as you can see, there's a list of songs that NewX has put up for you to jam to. And oh, thrill disappear, <laughs> thrill disappear, if you catch that joke. There are also the artist tracks. These are written by artists of um, New X. So again, feel free to jam along to them. One thing to note is that you actually don't have to limit yourself to jamming to only New X tracks. You can use this as a regular Bluetooth device and jam to any track you can find maybe on YouTube or Spotify and it will work. And finally, you have the settings tab that allows you to choose your um, various settings, the sound settings, etc. You can also go into your audio settings. It actually allows you to do reamping because this micro USB port here actually allows you to connect to your computer and works with all your door. So that could be a very good, useful situation where you need an audio interface. You use this and connect directly to your computer. And that's all I have for you for this new X Mighty Plug 2. So I mean, I've been talking about all the pros of this little product, right? Let me talk about some of the things that I don't like about this product. If you use a Ibanez Gem, the one, the Steve Vice model, namely this one, you will not be able to plug it in. I've tried it, it doesn't go in because this is just simply not long enough. This jack here is simply not long enough to go into a, a recessed jack hole like this one. And also this is especially to your new X. Since this is already accepting my guitar signal, wouldn't it be nice to just throw in a guitar tuner in the app so I can tune my guitar as well, rather than relying on a separate, you know, a clip-on guitar tuner per se. That means I have to carry one more device when I'm on my holiday trip. But yeah, other than that, I highly recommend this product to anyone who just start out wants to explore a little bit about what various effects sounds like and how you can tweak them. This is one way to go. 
and you don't have to burst the bank because this is a sub hundred dollars product so it is very cheap and affordable and forgettable in time to come when you have a better product so i hope you like my review of the mighty plug 2 if you like it give it a thumbs up let me know what you think about this product in the comment below and i'll see you in the next video bye